Okay, so we have a red squirrel that comes into the looking for peanut butter on this trap. It was originally in the, the big raccoon trap, ate the peanut butter, but it didn't close. So here it goes into it. The trap door just closed there. So the red squirrel is trapped, but he doesn't care. He's going to eat the peanut butter anyways. And um, these are the have a heart extra small traps and they are 16 inches long by six inches and wide and six inches tall and they retail for about 30 bucks in the u.s and about 50 bucks in canada and i've caught rats squirrels even some mice in uh, this trap but uh, this guy he actually figures out how to get out so he's been in there just for a couple minutes now he's checking every <laughs> all the the wiring uh, to see if he can get out it's kind of freaking out there um, he stopped eating the peanut butter and he wants to figure out how to escape from this uh, quarters but no he's gonna eat some more peanut butter build up his energy and he's not too worried right at this moment and this is a have a heart one door live animal trap it's an extra small trap so it's designed to catch small critters like this guy so like chipmunks squirrels weasels rats i've never caught a chipmunk in it but uh, this is i think the third red squirrel they kept getting into the bottom of my shed where I store the the lawnmower. And they, I don't know how he's getting in here. He must be tunneling in there because I'm sure I closed off every uh, possible way. This guy is getting on a roof by going up the trees and jumping. So I'll have to trim the trees back, obviously. And so the, this trap uses an ultra sensitive trip plate. You can see standing on a trip plate there, uh, which levers uh, unlocks the, the door to fall down at the far end where the red squirrel first entered. And it's a gravity action. So now he's, I think he's finished the peanut butter now. So he's trying to see if he could chew through the wiring quite a squirrely little fella and this is considered a humane trap because it doesn't injure the animals unless they cut themselves on a metal or something like that but so far this one looks like they're doing okay uh, I don't have sound on my surveillance camera what I did I relocated a surveillance camera from the bottom of the soffit the gable of the house and put it on uh, uh, the electrical post on the roof to see who got into my roof vent. Uh, I caught two raccoons so far, but the roof vent was, after catching the two, the roof vent still was being held on by two rivets, but the, it was completely taken off and on the other side of the roof. So I used some 14 gauge electrical wires to uh, tie down the, the lid for the roof vent and reset the trap for the rack see if there must be another a third raccoon but this guy I noticed the squirrel was eating my raccoon bait I was using peanut butter and now I understand I should be uh, using cat food especially like a fish product they also recommend marshmallows raccoons like marshmallows I guess they can smell them and I like the sweet taste so here we go. He's trying to figure, oh, I see he unlocked the top there. There's a locking uh, spring action. Let's see, he unlocked the top there. Uh, the door, I was trying to figure out how he did that, or if he even knew he was doing it. Probably doesn't know he's doing it. So anyways, this guy's been eating the bait for the raccoons. And so I was hoping to catch him. But eventually he figures out how to get out, as we'll see. Uh, shortly um, so this is a fairly tight 
uh, cage so obviously the animal doesn't get hurt and also it protects you the person the trapper who's catching the little menace and um, the cage the trap is made out of galvanized metal so it's corrosion free doesn't rust out on you and as I said it's 16 inches long and 6 by 6 for height and width and they seem to do the trick uh, for the most part but unfortunately I wasn't aware that this guy was up there I wasn't monitoring my my uh, surveillance camera that I put there and uh, so I was unable to get to it in time uh, because eventually he does figure out how to get out of here and if you keep watching you'll see that he does figure out right now he's, there's no hope there because he's at the wired end of the of the cage I've had this cage since uh, I guess about three years now got it on on Amazon and it's made in the United States so we're proud to support American workers keep things built in the US same with the bigger cage the raccoon cage it's a have a heart raccoon cage it's a much larger um, but it wasn't good for catching a squirrel because it doesn't have the weight to uh, trip the the plate and activate the trigger to close the door so it was going in there eating a raccoon bait no problem getting out with no concern but in this case the smaller cage it's easier to trip the the plate and these are really easy to set up for anybody who needs to catch um, a little critter who's causing them problems in their garden or in, a, in our case getting up on the roof pulling things apart uh, sometimes uh, squirrels and raccoons can take off shingles had that problem before and you don't want to get a water leak happening in your house like water can cause a lot of damage and the squirrel is hasn't given up yet and, uh, quite persistent it wants to get figure out a way to get in there uh, I don't know not too happy with this guy he's uh quite problemsome I do want to get the raccoon unless it was a this squirrel if it's strong enough to pull off that lid off the the roof vent but I I don't think they have the size there are some big black squirrels around that possibly do it uh, it could be one of them but right now I just think it's uh, this one but I would like to get the the raccoon if there is another one and I do believe there is another raccoon that needs to be caught here so uh, if you look on vlogger burgers we do have uh, some previous videos that show uh, two of the raccoons that were captured in the big raccoon trap there and uh, we just have to be sure at that time I didn't have the surveillance camera set up to see for certain who was going in and out of that uh, or who ripped off that lid off the roof vent but we did uh, show video of uh, who we caught in the trap so there's two different large raccoons that were caught in the, the big raccoon trap and um, I did catch two other squirrels a gray squirrel and a black squirrel which were much larger about twice the size of this little red squirrel here and but they this two squirrels were also caught in the raccoon trap but uh, this guy is just too light so he doesn't activate the trigger plate there so we need to get this guy out of the picture and get him trapped somehow I guess I'll have to just keep trying but they're pretty smart once he knows how to get out of there he's gonna keep going out unless that 
locking mechanism on the back of the door that goes inside the, the cage can stick to, to prevent him from escaping. Uh, he should be escaping here pretty soon. I just wish I would have looked earlier to see that this guy was in there. Then I could have got up on the roof and got him down and relocated him before he or she and managed to escape. So I'd like everyone to please like and subscribe to Vlogaburgers. We've got all sorts of videos up, uh, video games, uh, gaming videos, and lots of wildlife videos from orcas to wolves and kids putting together all sorts of different things like Lego, a rotor tiller, bicycle flats, a lot of interesting videos up on Vlogger Burger, so please like and subscribe. Okay, so Mr. Squirrel, what are you doing here, dude? Are you going to figure it out? They're sure persistent. They, they try to get out of there. And I don't think that's good for his teeth. Okay, so he's been in there for about, I don't know, 10 minutes now. And should be getting out soon. So for chipmunks, um, for bait, peanut butter seems to work for a lot of animals. That's what I've been using. Um, it kind of sticks to your... Uh, I sometimes I just put it right on the the top edge of the the trip plate there, or in this case I put it into a a large uh, plastic lid from a a large water water bottle, and uh, typically you would put the traps near the burrows for chipmunks, uh, but I like to put them where the problem is, where I don't want them to be. Uh, rats also, um, they obviously rats eat anything, but they recommend bacon and peanut butter or nuts and place it near uh, walls and wires and pathways that typically a rat would go along. And for squirrels, like um, again, peanut butter, nuts, apple slices and grains and keep away from other food sources like a bird feeder. Uh, I know squirrels like to get into bird feeders as well and voles um, I've never seen a vole I don't know if we've got them in, in our neck of the woods here um, but they like uh, apple slices nuts sunflower seeds gumdrops those types of things and it says you should glue those items in place with peanut butter so peanut butter is the glue and then you could add things on top of it uh, so I, I guess one of the risks of putting um, a little dish where the squirrel is right now is that it could reach in from the outside and unintentionally activate the trip plate uh, rather than putting it right at the middle, the far edge of the trip plate, uh, which I have normally done. Um, I wasn't sure if like this is a common path where the squirrel goes along, along the roof, or if it smells the peanut butter from a distance, like from a tree or if it's running along the ground, or if it's got an acute eyesight. Um, yesterday was pretty windy out, so they, uh, there was no action. So I'm guessing that uh, the aroma, the odor, the smell of the peanut butter was being thrown away in the wind whereas today at this time you can see a bit of a breeze because you can see the trees moving in the background but it wasn't as strong as uh, the previous day and it's always early in the morning just before or just after sunrise that uh, this character gets up there onto onto the roof so it's uh, oh it took another uh, lick from the lid there. He's washing himself now. Okay, I think we're almost at the time where oh, it's licking the lid again. Stop for uh, for more food there. Look at that. Flip the lid upside down. Oh, now it's okay, here we go. So, oh, no. 
I thought that was a point there. Okay, it's going to chew a bit more there. It's looking for a different spot to exit. The squirrely squirrel, the red squirrel running around, trying to figure things out. It would never, there's no small animal that's going to ever get through that cage. It's, uh, it's too strong. But, surprise, surprise, this guy does figure out a way to get out, as you'll soon see. Okay, we should be coming up close to the time where this mastermind of uh, this Houdini, the squirrel Houdini, figures out how to get out. I'm not sure how common is this is. If, if someone has had a, a chance, especially if you got it on video, or even just explain how if you had a, an animal who got into a trap but managed to figure out how to get out, Please share on uh, comments below and explain what your experience was. Because uh, now, geez, I had this squirrel, thought problem was solved. But unfortunately, this little critter did figure out how to, as you soon, soon will see, you'll soon see how this guy figures out how to get out. So here we go. Still working on uh, the back end of the cage they're trying to chew through uh, to no avail. It's That's not going to happen. You're not going to get out the back cage there. Oh, he froze. Uh, I guess I don't know what he... I thought the camera stopped there, but the, the squirrel froze for a second there. And uh, I looked at the, all the neighborhood homes around us and I haven't seen any... Uh, damage to uh, anyone else's roof because um, I would certainly let them know if uh, I would see damage to uh, their shingles or to their roof fence if um, raccoons or squirrels had gotten up there as well. We got lots of trees in uh, our neighborhood so those are popular highways for um, the wildlife the agile wildlife, which is pretty cool to, to see them on around. Um, we used to have a lot of rabbits in the neighborhood as well. Uh, rabbits are virtually no problem outside of maybe if uh, someone doesn't want them in a garden, but otherwise they're quite nice to see. But unfortunately, over the past decade, the uh, population of coyotes has increased. So a lot of very uh, seldom you see rabbits. Uh, we don't see a fox around anymore. We think the fo coyotes have gotten uh, the neighborhood fox and most of the rabbits. Uh, periodically you see a, a brown rabbit, but very rarely now. They used to be almost daily or every few days you would see them, even just a few years ago, but now it's quite rare to see them. Maybe once every few weeks. Uh, even, I believe, the raccoon population has... Um, gone down because of the coyotes, food for the coyotes, their game, their their meal. Um, the squirrel, I thought he would have figured out how to get out by now, um, to my uh, disappointment. It should be coming up pretty soon. It's kind of interesting to see how uh, um, uh, the persistency, I guess, uh, you and I, if we were trapped in a cage like that, we might want to figure out how to get out as well. Um, like this little red squirrel here. And he's going to eventually figure out how to get out of the cage, of the trap. This is, a, as I said, the have a heart trap. They're made in the U.S., United States of America and uh, they make all different size traps and a lot of uh, big box stores would sell these traps um, and their professionals use them and amateurs uh, anybody they're pretty simple simple uh, wire mesh design uh, easy to set up and as I said, peanut butter seems to be uh, the most common bait. 
Um, and even if you're using something else besides the peanut butter, uh, you use the peanut butter as glue to hold the other food bait in place. And on the right side is the squirrel. On the left side is the door where it entered in. And it's a, a drop door. It drops down like a guillotine. Not to chop it in half, but just to shut. And there's a little um, blocking mechanism. I'll put the the cursor there. There's a locking mechanism. should lock from the inside there. So the the door can open and I have the the cage the trap each trap tethered the smaller trap has tethered to the bigger raccoon trap so you know with the the critter inside it shaking the the cage around the trap around I don't want it to slide off the roof and injure somebody who might be walking below or kill the animal or injure the animal or damage the trap. So got everything all tied together. And I used um, white uh, household wiring with the plastic still on, uh, the 13, 14 gauge wire and tethered it to um, one of the brackets on the roof vent. So everything's held in place. And in this case, I put a, a uh, rigid piece of white cardboard underneath the the squirrel trap um, just so they don't rip up the shingles or if they defecate pee and stuff like that also the peanut butter would melt with uh, the black shingles the heat from the sun would melt the peanut butter and it could cause you know cause it to spill down and liquefy so by having the white reflective cardboard, that helps prevent the peanut butter from getting too hot. The squirrel's washing itself and now it's still trying to figure out how to get out the back of the cage there. And he's biting, running around. So he's been in there for quite a while. It's just unfortunate that I didn't check out the the monitor to see um, that it was there so I could have got up there and gotten uh, the squirrel out before it figured out how to escape. Then uh, I would have one less problem up on my roof had uh, I caught the squirrel. So you'll see very soon now that um, it's going to figure out how to escape from the, the trap here. Um, I'm glad I figured out how to put up the surveillance camera up on top of the roof that the cord um, was long enough. Well, I brought it out through the roof vent and it was long enough to um, tie the camera up to the uh, electrical post and to see what kind of activity is going on at the problem spot where someone pulled off the the lid off the roof vent of the of the house here so it's still working away and uh, it's a nice looking little red squirrel's got the white underbelly and Maybe it's not a purebred red squirrel because a red squirrel is usually totally red. This one's small though. It's a tiny with a, sort of like a reddish gray color, especially the tail's quite red, but the bottom of it from the chin right down to the hind legs is all white. And it's... Uh, didn't finish all the peanut butter in the lid. It f accidentally or unintentionally flipped the lid upside down and the lid slid under the the trip plate. Now it looks like it's catching its breath there. No, it's still, still working away. So soon, I thought it would have happened by now. That's, uh, I guess I should have timed it. But pretty soon you'll see this uh, squirrel here figure out how to get out of the trap. I've never seen this before, so I don't know how common 
it is that uh, a creature, uh, I guess it depends on how long you leave it in there to uh, um, allow it to figure out how it's going to get out of the trap. And I'm glad that I had uh, common sense to put down that white piece of cardboard so the, all the scratching in that from the the squirrel's not going to damage the the shingles plus it keeps uh, everything cool because it's uh, quite sunny out although there is um, a smoke pollution warning for all the fires going wildfires going on in the timberlands Okay, squirrel, are you going to figure out how to get out of here or what? The cage was empty, so you must have figured out how to get out on your own. I don't think someone came along to help this uh, individual to escape. Uh, like a, another squirrel or a raccoon or a person. I believe this critter figured out on their own how to get out now i gotta trap it again and hopefully um, it's not going to be gun shy it's not going to be hesitant to go back into the cage after being trapped in there uh, i guess we'll soon see because i'm gonna have to set it up but i think what i'll do is i'll set the the camera up further down on the on the roof away from the, the bigger cage just so that the, uh, the two cages aren't close together and I don't get um, as much interference and I believe I'm going to use a different bait for the, the raccoon. I'll use um, cat food. Oh, here it goes, here it goes. Oh, there. See, it figured out how to get out. It got out from under the door there. And there you go. The squirrel figured out how to get out. Can you believe it? Always it goes. There's the roof vent they've been getting into. You see how everything's all tied off. But I think future I'll just tie that uh, vent to the vent to the what do you call it, plumbing vent. I'll tie the the cage to the plumbing vent at the far end there, so the two cages are far apart and hopefully I can capture that squirrel again and it's going to go jump up a tree there oh, it just took off oh still it's over by the ladder it's way down there by the ladder so to do a close-up here of the squirrel escaping and um, it's going to get out in a few seconds here it's at uh, three seconds, two seconds. See, it just slides, reaches underneath and goes out the door. Slides out the bottom of the door there. So we'll see the even closer, the squirrel reaches underneath. See, it's paw sticking out, then it just gets out the bottom of the door there. And away he goes. Okay, so the squirrel's going to get out in seven seconds here. It's uh, running around, bit of a wider angle here. It's reaching underneath the door and the latch on top of the door didn't uh, lock or somehow earlier maybe it unlocked it so there goes the squirrel goodbye so please like and subscribe to vlogger burgers and uh, hopefully we'll have another video up of the squirrel captured without escaping so please like and subscribe bye for now